YouTubers, I'm Cassandra Joy and welcome to my channel. This is a what I eat in a day video and I'm going to show you exactly what I ate to lose 10 pounds in one week. For anybody who's new to this channel and doesn't know, I am on a low carb, low sugar lifestyle change. I explain all about why I chose to do that. I will link that video right here in the corner. In that video, it's a freshly new lifestyle change, so I was still adjusting and still learning. Honestly, a little unprepared for the amount of change that would have to happen. However, it's about a month later, and I can honestly say that I feel better. I feel like I have more get up and go. I'm having less headaches. I no longer get that midday slump, which would make me feel like I wanted to take a nap in the middle of the day every single day. I haven't been as bloated. I no longer feel sluggish to the point where I sleep all the time. I will now wake up with the sunrise, naturally. No alarm needed. I've noticed so many positives to making this change, and I wanted to share them with you. Before I start showing you the things I'm eating throughout the day and some of the things I have had to substitute for those normal carb and sugar choices, I will say that the first week of me making this change was utter chaos. <laughs> Trying to research and figure out what's the best alternative. I was not perfect. I was struggling, but luckily I'm a little over a month past that point. So I've learned a few things. I've found my rhythm and I want to share what I've learned with you on how I lost 10 pounds in one week and I wasn't even doing it perfectly. Hopefully you guys will find this content interesting. I know I definitely do, especially when it's not a scam, when someone's not trying to sell you something, when they're just being honest and showing their personal experience. I don't claim to be a professional. I don't claim to be an expert at any of this. This is just my journey. This has been trial and error for me and how I've been able to turn my health around in a very short amount of time and see positive results almost immediately. I know that sounds so gimmicky, but I promise it's genuinely the best decision I ever made. With that being said, I'm gonna make myself some breakfast. Let's do it. Now, for anyone who's worried that you're not gonna be able to have your much needed life sustenance coffee every single morning when you're on this lifestyle change, let me just assure you, you can. And I'm not talking about the black with a little bit of milk situation. I'm talking about coffee that genuinely tastes good. Let me show you. You will need a mug, some sugar-free syrup, and a growler. Actually, the growler is not really necessary, but I purchase cold brew from my local coffee shops to support small businesses. I bought this one gallon growler at the Vintage Market Days of Dayton and Cincinnati, which I vlogged and I will link right here. If you're curious how much I spent on this bad boy, you might want to watch that video. But anyway, I clearly am running out of my cold brew, which is very sad. And obviously you don't have to use cold brew. You can use hot coffee if that's your pleasure. But personally, I've been really into cold brew. So I'm going to pour that into here. Very hard to do with one hand. <laughs> Last of my cold brew. I usually fill my coffee about halfway and then fill the rest of it with lactose free milk because lactose is not my friend. And then here's where your sugar free syrups come into play. I am all about not depriving yourself to just the bare minimum of what you're eating. You can still add seasonings, you can still add flavor, you can have good tasting things and still make healthy choices. So I found this sugar free vanilla syrup from Tarani. Bought it off of Amazon. I've linked it on my Amazon store for you, which is linked down below. It'll be under my caffeine addict section. <laughs> then you just pour just a dollop in there. Making a mess, oh dear. Would it really be a video with Cass if it wasn't a mess? Not sure you can see it, but my coffee is very full. <laughs> oh, it's so good. Just that little bit of flavor makes all the difference. That is the first thing I make for breakfast every single morning. Not necessarily the most nutritious thing first thing, but I gotta have my coffee. But the nutrition is next. set the coffee aside and we're gonna grab another mug. I don't know about you, but definitely when I'm rushing out the door to go to work, the last thing I wanna do is pull out a skillet and cook something. So, I have a little hack that'll save you time and a little bit of hand washing. Grab yourself a mug, crack two eggs, 
I've also found it a lot easier to crack my eggs on a flat surface than on an edge, which I always grew up doing. But then I saw somebody else do it and it's so much easier. So crack your eggs on a flat surface. It's so much easier. Add a little milk, not too much, just enough to make them fluffy. And then you put it in the microwave. I really like to start out with some kind of protein first thing in the morning because for me personally, I don't feel good if I don't have something substantial on my stomach. When I would eat cereal or a piece of toast, it just wouldn't last me until lunch and I would feel weak stomached, I would feel a little bit lightheaded and definitely very hungry, which made me ravenous by the time lunch was around. And I found that by starting my day with a fair amount of protein, my hunger subsides for longer and I'm not as hungry when I get to lunch. If I don't have time to make eggs, I'll eat a few slices of sliced rotisserie chicken. That also has a lot of protein. I'm a big advocate of having meat for breakfast. I know that sounds really weird, unless it's bacon and sausage, people kind of gawk at the idea. What? <laughs> meat for breakfast? That's a lunch item. No, I know, but hear me out. It makes me feel so good to have that kind of solidity on my stomach. It's not eggs are done. It's not just a throwaway food where cereal would not stick to my stomach for more than maybe an hour. Meat and other items that equal that kind of protein I've found sustain me far longer than those other items I used to eat. Let me grab the eggs. Ooh, look, they're nice and fluffy. They look a little odd, but don't worry, we're gonna stir them. I like to heat them up at a minute and a half intervals because I find that if I do it slowly and stir as I go, it cooks more thoroughly. When I do it all in one go, there's a lot of liquid left at the bottom and that doesn't taste great. So I'm gonna put this back in for another minute and a half and then it should be done. You hear the plowing going on outside? <laughs> Country living at its finest. This morning I have physical therapy, which will definitely count as my workout because I'm now not at the beginning of my therapy, which means that they're working me really hard. So I will probably come home very sore, but physical therapy will lead right into lunchtime and I'll show you what I mean in a little bit. All right, loves, I am done with physical therapy. Let me turn my hair down so you can actually hear me take my hair down. Whew. They worked me good. My neck and shoulder was really bothering me today. Less my back which is what I'm there for. But I think once you fix one problem, other problems arise, and that was the situation today. So they worked my shoulders and my upper back and my neck, and it whew, was a workout, but a good one. And now I am super hungry, so I'm gonna hop on over to Tropical Smoothie <laughs> and get myself a smoothie for lunch, but we're not done yet. So, oops, so when I was really considering the low sugar part of my dietary change, I was flabbergasted with how much sugar was in everything. I knew it was in everything. You know this in your brain, but when you actually have to put it into practice and pay attention, it's just so overwhelming. And I wanted to get some tropical smoothie because I figured, hey, that's healthy, right? Well, they add a sugary syrup into it to sweeten it, which I didn't realize and learned the hard way. So what I've done is I can still get my tropical smoothie, but I ask for a few changes that make all the difference in whether or not it's healthy for you or not. I get a normal smoothie, but I ask for honey to sweeten it instead of their normal sugary syrupy sweetener. And then they have a coffee one that I really enjoy. I won't get that today, but when I do get it, I ask for it without the chocolate, which some of you might be like, no, that makes the drink. Trust me, it does taste good without the chocolate, I promise. And then again, ask it to be sweetened with honey instead of the sugary syrup. And that has made all the difference. I will say, when you are first making these changes, it won't taste as sweet. That's normal. My taste buds took a while to adjust. I've been staying away from about 90, 95% of sugars, bad sugars, and my taste buds have adjusted. So now when I go to get a smoothie and I have it sweetened with honey, it tastes really sweet to me in a good way. But at the beginning, it didn't. It tasted like something was missing. <laughs> if you choose to make these changes, expect that going in. Some things are not gonna taste the same right off the bat, but your taste buds will adjust. It just will take time to get used to those little tiny changes that make all the difference. So I'm gonna go get my smoothie. So I will take you along for that.
It is such a beautiful day today. The weather is gorgeous. It's supposed to get up to 70 degrees today, which I am not complaining about. I just got a sunrise sunset smoothie, and it even says sub honey, so they made it correctly. Let's give it a taste. Mmm, yum. This is just the pickup I need. I don't always feel hungry for lunch, but I wanna make sure that what I am eating is nutritious and beneficial. So having a fruit smoothie is a really good choice of something to eat and keep me full when I'm not feeling especially hungry. Okay, so I'll move you up here because you can't really see me there. It's very bright today. What I wanna do next is run a couple errands. I wanna go to Goodwill and see if I can thrift any gold ornate gold frames. I have a couple photos that I want to frame. I'm gonna sip on the smoothie while I go do that. And then by the time I'm done with that and get home, I should be hungry for a snack. And I'm gonna show you some really cool finds that I discovered that are great snacking options. If you're a snacker like me, you will appreciate this next portion of the video. <laughs> Hello, it's around 1.30 and I'm definitely getting a little bit peckish now. So I thought I would show you a couple of snack items that I go to to curb that salty sweet craving that usually hits me around this time of day. Before I list out any of these snack items, I want to let you know a little bit about me. For those of you who don't know, I used to be addicted to sugar. And I don't say that flippantly. <laughs> By addicted, I mean I would tell my mom I was going to the gas station to get gas but really I'd stop in and grab probably about 10 different candy bars I wish I was kidding and then I would hide it in my purse and gobble it up in one or two days and then I'd do it all over again between that and my heavy consumption of bad carbs like breads cereals crackers those fast carbs that those fast carbs that turn into sugar in your body really quickly between the two I really didn't do myself any favors so when I say that I have given up sugar I, I want you to understand that I understand the weight of that how impossible that can feel from where you are sitting and I truly don't think I would be doing this if I hadn't gotten the diagnosis from my doctor that I did. My brain is just one of those that needs an ultimatum, apparently, and I got my ultimatum. Like I said at the beginning of the video, if you want to hear more about that, I have a video all about what kind of diagnosis I'm talking about, how that came about. But as soon as my doctor told me that I would need to give up sugar and carbs because they pretty much turned into sugar, I was genuinely speechless. Now at this point in my life, I was not hoarding candy bars. My allergies, thank goodness, had already done a little bit of the groundwork in keeping me from eating certain things. So my allergies consist of garlic, peanuts, and a lactose sensitivity, all of which I found out the hard way. Don't suggest doing that. So that had already kind of done the groundwork, which I, I'm so thankful for because that made giving it up pretty much entirely. I would say maybe 95% because there's always a little bit here and there with things, especially when you consider good sugars. Finding snacks that tasted delicious was essential. But at the beginning of this, I didn't want to give myself anything that tasted even remotely sweet because I knew my addictive tendencies towards sugar. I did not want to give myself the ability to fall back into old habits. I wanted to just sort of do a clean break. So what I found that was really good for those beginning days when I just was craving sugar. I'll tell you what, I had many sugar headaches. I'm sure you know this, but sugar also contains caffeine and carbs. When you get rid of them, it can make you feel really not good. I had quite a few migraines after giving everything up. So during that initial detox process, I was desperate for something chocolatey, but I didn't want to give in to the candy bar situation, so I found this. This is available at Ollie. It's the Moser Roth Private Chocolates. What I really like about these is that this one in particular is 70% dark chocolate. There's another one that I think is 85%. I don't have that with me right now, but this was a perfect solution for giving myself that satisfaction of something sweet, but it also was kind of a sneaky way of weaning me off the sugar because it wasn't sweet tasting. The darker chocolate you get, the more bitter it becomes, and I wanted to make sure that I I didn't give myself that reward feeling for having something sweet tasting. I would reward myself with something bitter tasting that still gave me the satisfaction, 
but not all the way. I hope this is making sense. But one thing I really like about this brand is that it comes in individual little bars and that was so helpful in controlling how much I consumed. I would like to be the first one to let you know that nobody is perfect and there were definitely days where I did not eat just one of these bars, but the fact that it was really bitter helped curb that desire for sweetness because the thing that I was giving myself wasn't actually sweet. On to another snack. I actually have to thank my friend Amanda who has a YouTube channel called This Fantastic Life. So cute. But she actually introduced me to this in the first place. It's called Boom Chicka Pop. It's a whole line of popcorn and they all have different flavors. This one is the sweet and salty kettle corn. And if you look at the ingredients, it only has popcorn, sunflower oil, cane sugar and sea salt. It's 70 calories per cup. Not that I count calories, but if you do, this is a good option to have something that's real and can curb that sweet and salty craving. I feel like everyone here can agree that cookie dough is great. <laughs> well, I found a brand called Sweet Lauren's available at Kroger that has a couple different flavors of cookies. It is gluten-free, dairy-free, plant-based, and peanut and tree nut free, and can be eaten raw. So if I'm just really craving a chocolate chip cookie or a spoonful of dough. I'll just take one piece of the cookie and eat that and it's a perfect little snack. Enough to curb the cravings without going completely overboard and eating 12 cookies. <laughs> We've all been there, am I right? There's also a liquid snack that I can pair with any meal. For anybody who is on this journey too, you might have quickly discovered that you can no longer have pop, which is a sad state of affairs. I don't know about you, but I love me a 7-Up. I love me a Sprite. It's the carbonation. It's the sweetness it just speaks to me on a spiritual level and obviously I can't have that because of all the sugar so I found a really cool alternative it's made with cane sugar it has no calories it does have caffeine and depending on what store you buy it from you can find a replacement flavor for nearly every single pop in existence it's gluten-free vegan has zero calories no carbs and no sugars because it's made with cane sugar it's the perfect carbonated beverage to sip on and I genuinely love it it's just so good. So that's it for my go-to snack options. I will leave it here until dinner time and I'll show you a really cool pasta replacement that I finally found. I was dying without my pasta, I'm telling you what. But I found a healthier replacement that tastes just as good, satisfies, and leaves you full sooner. Hello loves, it's a little while later and I have made myself some dinner. This is such a yummy go-to for me now. It's full of protein and the pasta is actually not bad carbs. Let me show you what. I found this at Kroger. It's called Banza Penne Pasta made from chickpeas. And I have to give a shout out to my friend Sydney who told me about chickpeas being turned into pasta. Did not know that was a thing. So when I looked for pasta alternatives, I typed in chickpeas and this came up and when I tell you that it tastes just like normal pasta and fills me up faster has 13 grams of protein three grams of fiber and only two grams of sugar that's not bad I'm showing you the box because I've already made it this is just an extra box that I have the thing about chickpeas is that they're very filling I found that I didn't eat much of this pasta before I was absolutely full and that was just the pasta by itself I didn't add anything to it the first time I tried it tonight though I've added two chicken tenderloins a little bit of butter and bacon bits to the mix I can't even begin to tell you how good this is so good adding in the chicken and bacon make it so flavorful and so full of protein and really filling and I definitely will be scarfing this down once the camera is off but that is it for my low carb, low sugar, what I eat in a day video. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you guys like this video, I will definitely be doing more as I discover new recipes and new foods that align with this lifestyle change. I really want to share this kind of knowledge with you, especially as I go, because I know in past years I could have used someone who had this kind of knowledge and who learned about it the hard way, who started out at a bigger size and worked their way down to a smaller size. For me, it's really hard to take advice from somebody who is naturally small. Nothing against their size, but it's just hard to relate to their journey and their experience and to trust that the things that worked for their body type would then work for mine. So I hope that this video was educational and that you got something out of it. I'm enjoying sharing this journey, sharing new recipes as I discover 
discover them and sharing new foods like chickpea pasta that I didn't know existed and am now able to eat. I just find it really fulfilling to share this knowledge. And like I said, I'm not an expert. I'm learning as I go. But if I can help just one person who has a journey similar to mine, who's looking to make those changes and doesn't know where to start, this is the perfect place to start. Let me know what you guys thought about the video in the comments and I will see you next time. Love you guys. Bye.